Hello there, welcome back to the channel. This is part six of the .NET Core microservice with ABP series. In this video, we are going to see how to create a DB migration for all the services and on how to do the database seeding along with the data db migrations let's get started so the blog post is already up and then uh, this contains all the code you need to get the db migration running in the last videos we saw on uh, how to set up the um, services we have done the administration identity and then sas and we did the migrations locally there so we went inside the entity framework projects and then we have a db context factory there and then we use the db context factory to run the migration this is um pretty good we don't have to um, do anything else we can also run the database update there and it will just work but uh, if you have multiple services it will be nice to have uh, one db migrator which can uh, run the um which can run all the db migrations and uh the hired app usually comes with the db migrator hosted service and then the db migration module which is where we copied this from and you can actually see that there is a warning in the dependency we will go and then check out and see how to fix those and this is where we usually see the data as well uh, so we will see a bunch of things like permissions uh, and also uh, the user, the default administration user, the ad default admin user. So the first step is let's go to check the dependencies and then check. Okay, these two projects are not here, so I will remove them. Okay, now we don't have any errors. We will come and replace this one. Um, yeah, the first step is as always add the shared project reference. Okay, now we have the shared project. Then we have to add administration identity and then sas as a dependency not just the ef core we also need the contract projects so add project reference and in this um in this you will see uh, we need to add the references of entity framework and also the contracts maybe i should uh, yeah so these are the projects we want uh, we want the contracts project and then the entity framework project it's the same for the identity service contracts project and then the uh, entity framework core project and again for the sas contract and then the entity framework so i will uh, choose the contract entity framework contract entity framework and then contract again and the entity framework okay so now click okay now we have the references ready let's clean up all the other stuff we have seri log everything properly configured here and let's go and check the next step uh we have the um, configurations okay before for using this um for using this um ef core modules we need the connection string so if you come here there is only default connection string uh we will update those things later so the next step uh is to create the db migration service so i will create this class tasky db migration service okay and then i will just copy and then paste into the thing what does this do the db migration service takes the data seeder the current tenant and the tenant repository so it first uh migrates the host and then migrates the tenant the host is the uh, default tenant and uh, we can also uh, have multiple databases for certain tenants um so in that cases it goes through the list and then uh, migrates those things uh migrate all databases uh, will migrate and in the migrate all databases we are using sas service db context administration service db context and identity service db context and we are actually running we are calling migrate on almost all the databases configured here let's say we have a new service that means we have to uh, we can come here and then uh, add the service as a dependency and then add the i think add the db context as a um, migration uh, step here okay i think there is no errors in this file we can move on to the next step next step is 
updating the app settings the, uh, the, the app settings is a little bit different so first i will copy this and then update the things from here okay so usually you will see a different structure uh, of um, app settings so you will not see the app scope api scopes and api resources in the app settings you will see clients but the client structure is kind of different um i changed it in a way that i don't have to change code every time i come and add a new service so uh, let's say let's say i have a administration service here right so i can just copy and then replace this and then create a new client and then uh, i don't have to change any code every time i come and add a new service so that's why i i designed it in this way where um i can come and add uh, this json uh, because we don't have a ui for creating new clients the current way is you have to come and modify the code to add a new client every time we have to uh, add a new client this is a little bit different you just come and add a json with all the information um and you will have your uh, client seeded okay we have our and the and this also has the connection string for all the services so just that in mind okay the next step is the data seeder before the data seeder we need to create a service client so the service client is just a model for the json structure we have here so as you can see the client secret uh client id client secret root tour and it's the same so we are basically having a c sharp class for uh, so that we can easily parse this uh, in the pp migrator project i will add a class and we will have the service client and once the service client is created we will create a data seeder for the identity server the data seeder is where the actual data seeding happens and what this data seeder does is uh it basically reads the uh it basically reads this um app settings creates the api scopes creates the api resources and then creates these clients and it also does one more thing it creates the default um uh, seeding and also runs all the seedings uh, if, if necessary so this is the create client method which creates the client uh create api resources method which creates the apis um and yeah this is where we kind of get the client and then loop through the clients and then create the clients for us and yeah uh, the seed method is executed and then it create it calls the other three uh, seed method. okay and this is the uh data seeder contrib so this is where we have this uh, data seeder contrib with i transient dependency though so that the data seeder automatically figures out about the our identity server data seeder mm -hmm. we have the data miss this is not required anymore we have our identity data seed contrib uh, data seeder server client tv migrator service and then the, this is the module and the module has a couple of things we don't have any background jobs and do that and now now we just have to uh, make sure that the dependencies are correctly available so for that we just have to make sure um, the migration module has all the dependencies correct so for that we will add the dependency of application uh, administration server and administration service the server service, 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 service. okay so now we have all the modules configured we have all the dependencies configured and we have uh, the shared module configured as well so hey we have our uh, db migrator hosted service here so the db migrator hosted service will trigger the migrate async and that will trigger all the other migrations and uh, in during the migrations we will also uh, trigger the seeding and this is where we are actually adding the default uh, admin uh, username and default password before doing anything let's go and check the database first so here is the um, administration service uh, database where you can see all the tables right now we can see the features are empty and also settings is empty and there is no permissions available and let's do the same for the uh, app users there is no users available no roles and no clients so basically our database empty and um, what we what should happen uh, here is that when we run the database migration project the cd should trigger it should see the users 
and also permissions. And if there is any migrations, the migration should apply. Let's see. Let's first build a project. Let's see if the build is happening. It says the common.props is missing. Yes, it's actually coming from the old project. We should remove that. Okay, the project is building. Now let's run it. Just ignore the RabbitMQ error for a while because we will do the RabbitMQ soon. Seems like there is a problem with Redis cache. Let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, the migration is complete. The only thing is we don't need the shared module here. So I will remove that and also take this away. And let's try to run it again. Okay, the migration runs successfully again. Perfect. And now if, if, if you go and check the users, we should have one user. Yes, we have one user. And if we go and check the clients, yes, we have clients. So we have uh, yeah five clients, which we mentioned. And we can go and check the tenants should be still empty because we didn't create any tenants but we should see some permission because the admin user should have some permissions and then the basic uh, tenant sorry the default admin permissions are already seeded let's see the settings there is no settings there is no features or there is no audit logs great so we have a way to um, see data and also um, run migrations for your uh, microservices we will revisit this again when we add a new microservice and then set up a new microservice i will show how to add a permission and then seed that permission uh, in the administration service and how the authentication flow will work yeah uh, make sure you subscribe to know that and uh, that's pretty much it for this video uh, the next video is going to be on how to do uh, tie and then connect everything with yarp so we will have a reverse proxy and tie in the next uh, video uh, until then hope you have a good day and uh bye bye